Hey everybody, I'm Michael with Finishing Technologies. Welcome back to the spray booth today. Today I want to go over the three pathways of electricity, powder, and air through an OptiFlex system. This applies to all OptiFlex and OptiSelect lines. Um, just helps you better understand what's happening throughout this system. Great for new operators or operators with any experience at all really. Take a look, you might learn something. So first, we're going to go through the path of power through the system for this unit. So you've got a grounded plug plugged into your wall. Uh, that cable takes current into the back of the control unit here where it runs through a power control board that sends power to your faceplate and to a solenoid valve and four digital axial valves that regulate your air pressure through the system. From the back of the control unit, voltage gets sent out two places. Uh, first is going to be your redundant ground, this yellow and green cable. This is meant to dissipate any static buildup that could harm components inside the control unit. This cable is not meant to ground your parts to. Second is your low voltage cable down to your vibratory motor in the base of the unit what's responsible for shaking the table and then last is the low voltage cable running to the gun low voltage cable runs into the gun handle up through the gun to the rear controls on the gun you can do a few different functions with these rear controls which we cover in another video from the rear controls that current runs through a high voltage cascade in the gun body from that cascade, current flows through the contact tip in the front of the gun body. From that contact tip, current will flow through this conductive ring in your electrode assembly. From that ring, it runs through a resistor and finally out to your electrode wire in the electrode assembly. Uh, from the tip of that electrode, as powder and air flow across this assembly, oxygen molecules in the air and powder particles pick up electrons and that is the beginning of the electrostatic process. Those particles are flying towards your substrate and those electrons want to ground out as fast as possible. So as long as you have good grounding, that's where your electrons end up dissipating out to. Uh, once they've attached to your powder to your parts. So that's really the path of electricity from your wall through the system through your powder out to your part. Uh, next is going to be the path of air through the system. So from your shop compressor hopefully through a dryer or filtration system you'll get good clean air to the regulator uh, on the back of the control unit here. Uh, this regulator does have a filter element in it which does need to be replaced. That's a maintenance part which is in another video. From the factory this regulator is set where it needs to be at 5.5 bar. It does need about 90 psi. Uh, from this regulator your airline runs into the back of the control unit up top here. On the inside of the control unit there is a T-fitting that sends constant fluidizing air to your uh, fluidizing air valve and then three other lines that will trace here uh, air running through the other valves. Uh, the first of those air lines we'll cover is the rinsing air line. That's the clear line on the back of the control unit. That clear air line runs to the base of the gun handle here. This rinsing air runs through the gun body and out the front of the gun through this hole here. Uh, the rinsing air runs through the three holes in this black conductive ring assembly on the electrode and that air is what's cooling your electrode in the front of the gun. Having rinsing air is critical to this process as it saves 
where on the electrode assembly and downstream from there. Uh, the next airline is going to be your fluidizing airline. That's the six millimeter black line coming out of the back of the control unit. That airline sends fluidizing air to your pickup tube assembly here through a restrictor, through your pickup tube, and through a fluidizing ring at the base of the pickup tube. Uh, next is going to be your conveying and supplementary air lines. The conveying air is your red line here that's going to plug into the pump up top here. There is a filter element in this pump assembly in each of these housings that needs to be replaced probably twice a year depending on your settings and air quality. Uh, from this fitting this is high pressure air that is creating a low pressure zone inside the pickup tube. That's what pulls the powder up, moving toward high pressure. And then your supplementary air line, this black line here, is what's pushing your powder down the hose. So that's the four pathways of air through the system. You had your rinsing air line, your conveying and supplementary air lines, and of course your fluidizing air. So we've covered the electrical path and now the path of air. The path of powder is fairly simple. Obviously you've got your powder box on your pedestal here. Uh, powder is running up through the pickup tube, down the hose, and out the gun. So that's the very basics of what's happening here. Um, we'll get into adjustments, maintenance, troubleshooting, and other videos. This is just the very basic foundation of what's happening with this system. So thanks for tuning in. If you have questions, uh, if you need help troubleshooting, um, please reach out to us. We're here to help, and uh, we'll see you on the next video. Thanks a lot.